Hey folks, your OS Reviews. You're watching our retro review of the Samsung Beat DJ. This was a multimedia handset released by Samsung a few years back, and it had audio technology by Bang & All since Ice Power. So this is one out of a handful of uh, phones that was collaborated between Samsung and BNO. Uh, of course, BNO is a very famous uh, audio brand name as far as making great high fidelity speakers and equipment that retails for pretty expensive costs. So of course the performance of the music playback as well as the stereo speakers on this phone are both excellent. It also features a rather unique interface for mixing your own music. So as the phone kind of resembles the shape of a vinyl record, you can see from the two sides here as well as the texture uh, when it kind of reflects off of the light, you can actually scratch on the music that you're playing as well as record it, change the pitch and frequency and add other effects. Uh, so it's really meant for music enthusiasts. It's not a fully fledged smartphone um, and it has a pretty small footprint. Something else that's unique about this, it's, it's actually not a phone that really was released in the US under a specific carrier. It wasn't subsidized. Instead, you could pick it up unlocked and it did hit the shores in some other nations. So uh, we're looking at an international version here. Otherwise, a closer look at the design, we can see that this is a completely plastic phone, which was a little bit surprising to me at the time because it resembled a more expensive um, you know, handset in terms of the front is a capacitive screen, but it's a, it's a plastic screen as opposed to using Corning's Gorilla Glass. And also the accents here are made out of plastic. They're chrome plastic as opposed to full metal. So when I picked this up, I remember feeling surprised at how lightweight it was. It also has a 2.8 inch AMOLED screen, which shows off colors uh, very vibrant Vibrantly, and viewing angles with AMOLED screens are terrific. The same thing uh, can be found here. So in terms of playing back some video clips, you won't have any issues as far as the display as well as the brightness. So on the very top, you have access to a front-facing camera for uh, video conferencing and video calls. There is a loudspeaker. Uh, on below here, you have access to three controls, which are fairly tactile and responsive. They take you to the uh, home key here and also have talk and end keys that also dubs as the power key. Down below, you have access to a latch to open up the battery compartment. And on the sides here, you have have access to a volume rocker, which is pretty tactile and responsive as well, a lanyard strap, as well as a lock key for the touchscreen display, which uh, you can lock this up in case you accidentally hit it when you have it in your pocket. There's also a flap that protects the micro USB port, which is standard for charging. That was pretty good at the time, considering Samsung used to use a lot of their proprietary ports uh, for accessories. The top ultra fe also featured a full 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, again protected, even though this isn't a fully waterproof or a dustproof smartphone or handset, I should say. There's also access to a micro SD card slot for expanding the built-in memory, which is very minimal, uh, allows you to add more songs as well as uh, more multimedia content. And finally, there is a two-stage camera shutter key, which activates the three megapixel autofocus enabled camera on the rear of the handset, which also features an LED flash and vanity mirror for taking self-portraits. So that's pretty much the design, a very compact and kind of stylish, but also a peculiar looking phone just because of this two rounded corners on the top and the bottom. But overall, it's pretty slim as well as lightweight and easy to carry around. So taking a quick look at the menu interface of uh, the Beat DJ Next, you can see that it has Samsung's proprietary TouchWiz OS, which was quite common at the time of this phone's debut. Uh, debut. So you can see here you have access to a few widgets that you can select and then drop onto the main screen here. These widgets are pretty sensitive. However, one complaint that we did have was because it isn't a smartphone, you can't actually expand on these widgets. So you're locked down to the number that comes included out of the box. Uh, so let's say you download a new game, you actually can't add that as a widget widget and then drop it out. You can also collapse this folder when you're finally done. And you can see here we have a few different widgets like notes as well as uh, launching the DJ music player mode, profiles for our cell phone. It uses a full size SIM card slot um, and otherwise also again uses a removable battery which is nice to see. There's also access to things like uh, Facebook as well as YouTube. There's also a photo browser on here, an FM radio, although you do need to have the headphones plugged in acting as the antenna to access that function. There's also things for uh, again quick games you can launch any Java games on here, as well as the help and settings, as well as a Google search and AccuWeather for quick weather updates. So a few different selections that you can go through and pick quite uh, easily. The screen as a whole feels pretty sensitive and you also have three separate home screens to customize with a few other features. For instance, this one is dedicated to your favorite contacts, 
I can slide again to this main screen, and then once again to my uh, all of my applications, I can also launch this screen by tapping on the menu key. So there's actually two ways of accessing this uh, specific page. Otherwise, there isn't anything fancy like drag down notifications, so you don't get that. There's also no advanced wireless functions such as uh, 4G, nor is there Wi-Fi, which was a little disappointing at the time because this thing did have a HTML browser, so it was a pretty good desktop version of a, of a browser for a mobile phone. However, with that Wi-Fi, speeds were quite slow and you were often tied to, I would say, either a contract or rather expensive data fees. Um, otherwise, taking a closer look at some features of this uh, unit next, one thing that we didn't really love was how sometimes the widgets interfered with, with uh, what you wanted to do in terms of growing back and forth between the screens. So if you accidentally hit one of the widgets, it's going to move the widget as opposed to kind of moving across one of the screens. So you kind of have to be careful there and not populate the page with uh, too many of those. Otherwise, you can see here that uh, this version is has been subsidized again by an international carrier, which is why it has some other bloatware on here. But you can see that most of the things are, are fairly clean. So taking a look at the camera first, again at 3.2 megapixels it's nothing to write home about. However, it incorporates a fairly standard Samsung interface back in the day for taking pictures and you have a fair amount of selections. Uh, I was pleased to see how the uh, angle of the, the, the camera, you know, as far as being a you know a pretty low resolution sensor, is actually fairly wide so it can capture a large frame within the shot. It also features autofocus, although the process is quite uh, slow. Um, it still does work and overall your images are are fairly sharp looking and if you view them back on the screen since it's an AMOLED screen or on a computer the results are actually better than I expected. There's also access to things like settings uh, for doing single shots, continuous shots, uh, panoramic shots, smile mode so it detects a smile then automatically takes an image uh, placing different frames together. There's also things for turning the autofocus on or off, changing the resolution, the timer settings, white balance effects exposure as well as the detailed uh, you know nature of the image quality so from super fine to normal so on and so forth i can also control the flash turn that on or off now this isn't a xenon flash it's just a led flash which means that it works decently um, although it's still a little bit on the dimmer side of the spectrum but all in all not a bad camera especially for a multimedia phone meant for music as opposed to picture taking or something like that at the time and then tapping on this key down below we can view back our images now as a capacitive touchscreen smartphone, I was a little surprised to see that there isn't multi-touch support on here either. So you can't pinch and zoom. You have to kind of manually go through the settings. You do have the ability to go through these as a slideshow to edit these really quickly in terms of cropping and effects. You can set it as a wallpaper or as a home screen. You can also send it to friends and family using text messaging services uh, pretty easily and also, of course, upload it to things such as Facebook and Twitter. So those are all some of the features that you can do. Checking out the video playback capabilities of the BDJ, it's actually quite impressive, uh, mainly because because the phone itself has support for quite a few video codecs. You can see the accelerometer here is quite responsive. And since it's an AMOLED screen, we didn't have any issues as far as the view angles and the colors that it produces are quite natural looking as well. In a sense, it reminds me of the Omnia HD because it represents the same era of design philosophy for Samsung phones. And you can see here that scrubbing between multiple parts of the video is quite uh, fast as well. So the processing power here is uh, pretty good as far as uh, playing back videos and even longer clips. Otherwise, we also get our first glimpse of the Beat DJ's audio performance capabilities because you can hear how loud these uh, speakers are despite being mounted on the edges or the hinge, you know, as opposed to being on the front. Uh, I'm only having this on 7, it goes all the way up to 14, so you can really just imagine how it completely fills up smaller spaces and rooms just fine. Definitely one of the loudest mobile speakers I've come across on any handset or smartphone, so quite impressive in that department. Uh, sound quality we'll discuss more in detail a little bit later, but uh, all I can say is that it's quite loud, it's clean sounding, it's not the richest speaker in the world, but uh, again for a phone speaker, it does a great job. So something else I really like about the Beat DJ is the fact that it has a few nifty almost a Samsung things that, that has it has going for it. So they've done some customization as far as uh, viewing back images and things. If you kind of tilt the phone back and forth, it uh, allows you to also scroll through your images that way. So if I kind of pan and tilt, you can see how it goes back and forth between your images using the accelerometer and gravity sensor. Uh, this is one of the one of the many nifty software things that Samsung has begun their experimentation with uh, since this phone came out. And of course, now we have a ton of features on their Android uh, TouchWiz, again, TouchWiz touch skinned smartphones. Uh, so we can kind of see where the inspiration came from, from packing all of these fancy animations and transition effects. 
Other things to take a closer look at, we have a dial pad, which is fairly spacious and easy to tap and dial on. The phone in general performed fairly well as far as reception and the microphone quality. Uh, it's a slightly on the tinny side of the spectrum, but really not bad. And uh, all in all, as long as you're content with using 3G connectivity, it does a pretty good job as a cell phone. Battery life was also decent. It lasted me about two days before I needed to recharge it again. It fully recharging it only takes about an hour and a half, so uh, pretty energy efficient. But then again, you don't you don't have as many you know games as well as apps that could potentially drain the battery a lot faster. So taking a closer look at uh, some other extras on here before we launch into the music player, uh, we can also create an alarm. It seems like, and if we tap on entertainment, there's things like accessing Google for a quick searching, uh, a calendar which allows you to set up uh, reminders as well. There's also kinetic scrolling on here so you can just tap and slide and the page automatically goes up. There is a haptic feedback so the phone does vibrate each time that you tap on the screen to give you the illusion that you're actually pressing on a physical key or button. There's a basic voice recorder as well as memos and tasks that you can check out and there's also things like the converter timer. There's a world clock on here that I think is kind of cool uh, worth taking a closer look at. It shows off the different uh, regions of the world as well as how the time differences are arranged. It reminds me of a, of a larger map. You can see here that you can scroll all the way up and check out, let's say, a specific region if I want to tap on this, and it shows off the time info uh, and how that time info stacks up against the current region that you're in. So a pretty nifty little tool that's uh, built on in. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and check out the music functionality. If I tap on the uh, music key here, it actually gives me a few rec a few different uh, options. I can launch directly into the music player by Samsung. Uh, it's a regular music player, does a pretty decent job. I can go into the Beat DJ application, which allows me to scrub, record, and edit um, currently stored music on the phone. Or I can also open up a music recognition app that allows me to quickly search up a music if I'm hearing a few seconds of it. So quite a few options on here. I'm just gonna go directly into the Beat DJ app because I think that's the one that we wanna check out for now. Uh, so if I wanna look at all of my tracks, Let's play back a Samsung track, so Beyond Samsung, for instance. So you can see here that the app loads up pretty quickly. Again, the volume can get quite loud. And something else that's kind of interesting about the BBJ is actually the curves on the screen here are also touch sensitive. It reminds me of an iPod scroll wheel back in the day. So if I wanted to, let's say, tap on a track key here and go through some of my options in terms of my uh, music, you can see here there is a uh, controller here that I can scroll on, and even if I'm tapping on the area or the gesture area below the screen, it still works. It's a complete 360 degree circle. So that's pretty sensitive as well as unique and makes navigation a bit more easy. So. It's one of the things. When I'm done with this track, I can also uh, record it. Uh, I can also press in a few samples that allows me to change things, like add a voice over to it. Let's say, if I wanted to play around with that. There's also filters that I can play around with, such as reverb, high pass, low pass, tempo change, pitch shift. So let's say I want to try that. I can make the pitch higher as well as lower. And it's actually pretty responsive as well as easy to control and maneuver. Scratch opens up this virtual uh, vinyl that you can then scratch on. And it's also pretty easy to use. You can then record it on an SD card or leave it on the phone's internal memory and take it out later. So pretty intuitive and easy to use. Um, and again, a, a kind of a fun, but also a gimmicky application at the same time. I don't think people are really gonna play with this for long unless they really are enthusiastic about music, unless they're some kind of DJ. Uh, but otherwise, it's probably one of the reasons why the BDJ inevitably wasn't too popular as a, as a multimedia phone just because the feature set here is uh, quite narrow and portrayed in this very niche way. Um, so otherwise though, it, it is unique. Again, it's something that we really haven't seen before and that's why we wanted to revisit again here in this retro look back. So before we end this video, I'm also gonna show you guys really quickly what the web browser looks like on this. Again, it's an HTML browser, so it wasn't terrible, but one of our complaints at the time was also that it didn't have any support for a QWERTY keyboard, which was uh, kind of terrible because text entry became a huge pain. It did have T9 predictive text entry, uh, which was a little bit easier, but still not great. Now, for a phone that has an accelerometer and the capacity to add a QWERTY keyboard, we were a little bit confused why they just stuck with this T9 layout that you had to pick out letter by letter and kind of find things this way, you can see there's actually no way to, to change this layout past what they've given you into this accordy style. So as far as messaging goes and searching up a lot of links, it's not the best experience in the world. 
So anyways, guys, this has been our quick retro review of the Samsung Beat DJ, a very peculiar and unique uh, music phone that was released by Samsung before they really found success for their more popular and consumer-oriented uh, Android phones that we see today on the market, their Galaxy series. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a very memorable phone just because of that partnership with Bain and Olufsen um, in terms of the audio quality and performance on here. It was excellent. And also from a des design perspective, it was something new that we really haven't seen before. Thanks for watching this video here at OS.